Greetings and welcome to the first part of Shiju Spade, the Japanese Navy. In this video I'll be looking at the vessels in the Japanese coastal tech tree that get a small ship's bomb and evaluate if they're worth spading or not. These used to be the beginning of your naval experience for Japan before the tree split, let's see how they fare nowadays. We'll start where everyone will start, with the Type T-14. This reserve is somewhat subpar compared to its counterparts in other nations, as it is one of the slowest with a top speed of 61 km an hour, with a somewhat poor turning circle as well. The Type T-14 carries a single, rather lackluster 13.2mm machine gun, which has a low damage output due to its small belt size and relatively long reload. I suggest mainly using the armor-piercing tracer belt, since the high explosive shells don't pack enough punch to go through the hulls of other ships. The gun has a fully rotating mount, allowing you to dodge and weave as much as you want. However, the mount has rather poor gun handling and a maximum gun depression of 10 degrees, which is very noticeable in rough seas and mid-turn making your already rather low effective range even lower. The Type T-14 also carries two torpedoes and six depth charges. I recommend you don't bring depth charges on any ship as they're more of a liability than anything else. And I will not mention them on any other ship from this point forward, with one noticeable exception. But if you know what you're doing, who am I to stop you from equipping them anyways? As for playstyle, I suggest you play the ship as a close range ambush vehicle. Its low damage output means it will usually lose direct gunfights with its peers, its small silhouette, however, can make it rather sneaky for flanking where you can then try and support your teammates with fighting already engaged targets, launching torpedoes against bigger, slower targets. Pros, low profile, good torpedoes. Cons, poor firepower, rather low mobility. Verdict, spaded. You don't really have a choice here unless you prefer to grind a tree with a high tier premium. It won't take long since it's a reserve, but it might not be as enjoyable as its peers. Next at 1.0 we have the Type T-1. This vessel has higher mobility but weaker main armament than the Type T-14. The Type T-1 having a 10 km an hour higher top speed but only two 7.7mm machine guns which have a really short effective range of around 1 km and below. The Type T-1 carries two torpedoes which are weaker than those on the Type T-14 but still more than adequate for 1.0. These torpedoes paired with the two depth charges the Type T-1 gets are its main armament as the guns are just not good enough to meaningfully damage naval targets. The mobility of the Type T-1 paired with a rather small profile make it good for closing the distance to enemies where your torpedoes have the highest chance of hitting and where you can possibly use your depth charges as a last resort, its guns being most useful as manual AA. For its playstyle I suggest a hyper aggressive strategy where you can rush a capture point and stay close to it. Use the two torpedoes and two depth charges as your primary weapons, closing into point blank range to ensure hits, and staying near the capture point to reload your explosive ordnance. This might be suicidal in most cases, but it's most likely the only way to effectively get kills on the Type T1. Pros, good torpedoes, decent mobility. Cons, poor firepower, low survivability. Verdict, skip it. The spading process on this ship, while short, will be filled with frustrations due to your main armament. Your experience of the ship will mainly depend on how close the enemy will allow you to get. Now onto the last 1.0 currently in the Japanese fleet, the Sokote 1927. With a top speed of 22.2 km an hour stock and armed with one 37mm cannon and two 6.5mm machine guns, it is honestly quite a chore. Its speed makes it so the Sokote 1927 can't choose its own fights nor flank enemy positions. However, it can be deceptively tanky. Its armor is not strong enough to stop anything, but with the Sokote 1927 being as slow as it is, it's not difficult to bow tank in it. But if you face a ship with a high pan gun, it will knock out your rear crew segment by just going through the entire ship since it's so small. And then you have to look at its main armament. The 37mm doesn't hit that hard, which means you'll often have to hit the same crew compartment two or three times before knocking it out. Pair that with the fact that on somewhat rough seas your main gun will have a lot of trouble getting on target, the Sokote 1927 will often get outgunned. The 6.5s are inadequate against service targets and the turrets don't allow for effective anti-air cover against anything other than planes flying at sea level. For playstyle I suggest you try your best to hide and take pot shots at unsuspecting targets. Its low speed may make this difficult, but its very small size will help you find cover where other vessels wouldn't have any. Pros. Small target. Decent survivability. Cons. Poor firepower. Poor mobility. Verdict. Skip it. 
the lack of damage potential and mobility and the strong dependence on sea conditions for the so-called T-1927 is what really decided this verdict, often being nothing more than target practice for the enemies. This ship is widely seen as a meme amongst naval fans, however, mainly because of its small size and low speed, but other than that it is not enjoyable. Up next we'll look to its bigger brother, the so-called T-1940, sitting at 1.3. Armed with a 57mm cannon and two twin 7.7mm machine guns with a stock top speed of 21.8 km an hour. The so called T1940 is very similar to the 1927 but certainly better armed and armoured. The 57mm has a choice of high explosive, high explosive anti tank, and armour piercing. I suggest using high explosive or high explosive anti tank, with high explosive anti tank having more explosive mass but less muzzle velocity than high explosive. The two twin 7.7s of the so-called T-1940 are more than capable as anti-air weapons due to the increased volume and fire and better firing arcs given by the better turrets. The mobility is still a major problem for the 1940s, same as it was for the 1927, still leaving you incapable of choosing your fights. Bow tanking with the so-called T-1940 is still the way to go, slightly more effective than in the 1927 because of the better armor protection. It still has the same vulnerability where a high padding round can go straight through the entire ship and damage the rear crew compartment that way. For playstyle you can be a bit more aggressive in the so called T1940 than you could in the 1927, thanks to the better armament and armor. I suggest you still try and use as much cover as you can and sneak towards capture points and other areas of close range engagements, where the low velocity of your 57mm won't be that much of a factor. Pros, decent survivability. Decent firepower. Cons, poor gun handling, poor mobility. Verdict, consider it. The Soko T1940 is a direct upgrade to the 1927 in every conceivable way. The armor is functional to a degree, damage output of the 57mm if you hit is considerable, the secondaries are much more efficient due to their mounts and number, where the 1927 had potential, the 1940 fulfills it. The only thing that might spoil your experience is how often you'll find battles of rough seas. Now onto something of a similar nature, the Type 5. The Type 5 sits at 1.7, is armed with a single 75mm cannon and two single 20mm auto cannons. The 75mm packs a punch but has a rather slow reload and gets a choice of high explosive, armor piercing high explosive and high explosive time fuse. The two 20mm auto cannons get a choice between universal belts high explosive tracer belt and armor piercing tracer belt. The belts perform very similar to one another so the choice will mainly be down to your personal preference. The mobility of the Type 5 is very poor with a spaded top speed of 23 km an hour, which makes it very difficult to adapt to the battlefield. As for its survivability, not too bad but nothing particularly special, being tanky enough to not be affected by heavy machine guns, but auto cannons will hurt the Type 5 significantly. For playstyle, I suggest using the 75mm to take pot shots at targets while closing into your main position, from where you'll mainly be using the 20mm as your main armament, with the 75 being relegated to mild AA with its high explosive time fuse shell, or for when you encounter an enemy your 20mm can't deal with. Pros, decent firepower, decent survivability, cons, bad mobility. Verdict, consider it. The firepower is good and survivability is decent enough, but the lack of mobility is what crushes any potential the Type 5 has. It's not rare for your team to just leave you in the dust and to go kill the enemy and capture points, leaving you to only mop up the scraps. But on the few occasions where you are on the front line, the two 20mm can deliver quite some hurt upon the enemy. For a change of pace, we'll look at the Type 4 Model 2. While still a somewhat slow gunboat at 1.7 it is armed with a 20mm. You can forget the 37 exists, since using the 20mm as your main armament is a much better option. Gun handling and performance are decent on the 20mm, but nothing special at that BR. The firing angles of this 20mm are restricted, making it incapable of firing directly ahead of the Type 4 Model 2. This restriction is rather minor, so you can still fire the gun over the shoulder, so to speak. The survivability of the Type 4 Model 2 is somewhat compromised by that fact, but this shouldn't have too great an effect on your overall survivability, since it's a pretty fragile ship to begin with. 
for a playstyle I recommend you try a kiting strategy where you approach the target so that you can get into your effective range for the 20mm, then turn 180 degrees and sail away and you start taking fire. This way you have an optimal arc for your 20mm while also being able to dodge incoming fire more easily. Pros, decent firepower, cons, low top speed, low survivability. Verdict, consider it. The Type 4 Model 2 isn't particularly bad or good vessel. The armament isn't exceptional either, but certainly serviceable. It's a perfectly standard vessel for its type. Next up is a Type T38. Still looking at 1.7 and possibly my favorite Japanese low BR boat back when it was introduced. The most notable feature on this vessel is a single 25mm autocannon on a mount that can rotate to full 360 degrees. Even though it has a small magazine size, the damage output with AP is high enough to sink an enemy in just one mag. The effective range of the 25mm is also surprisingly long and to top it off, the Type T38 also comes with two torpedoes. The mobility is relatively low due to a low top speed and a rather large turning circle. Survivability wise is what you'd expect of a vessel of its type, pretty low. For playstyle I suggest you be rather aggressive, as you can, with experience, keep dodging and turning, throwing off your enemy's aim, but keeping your own on target thanks to the 360 degree rotation with your gun mount. Not to forget that if you find a target too big for the gun, you still have two torpedoes at your disposal. Pros, good firepower. Cons, mediocre mobility, mediocre survivability. Verdict, spaded. While at first appearance the Type T38 is not too different from the Type 4 Model 2, the 25mm with its 360 degree mount and the two torpedoes are a certain bonus that would make the spading process much more comfortable for you. Next, another slow gunboat and the only 2.0 in the tree, the Hako. Armed with a dual 20mm and a single 57mm cannon, it carries a rather heavy armament. Dual 20 should be used as your primary armament with AP belts. The weapon layout is similar to the Type 4 Model 2 that preceded it, so if you've gotten used to how that plays, you'll quickly get the hang of the gun handling on the hard goal. I recommend equipping the 57mm with heat, just in case you come across something that's heavily armored, so you can more adequately deal with it, and otherwise let the AI handle the gun. The Hako has a top speed of 25km an hour, which is very slow, and can lead to situations where you're overextended and can't retreat to safety. Similar to the earlier slow gunboats, it has some stability issues in rough seas, which can make shooting difficult. While the hull has a low freeboard, it is very wide, thus still making it a big target, especially to gunfire from longer ranges. Playstyle-wise, use the Hako as you would a tank destroyer on ground forces. Stay to the back lines, preferably behind solid cover, only poking out your dual 20mm mount. This way you'll extend your lifetime with the Hako considerably without wasting any potential since it's a slow vessel to begin with. Pros, good firepower, cons, poor mobility, low survivability. Verdict, consider it. While the low mobility hampers it greatly, it would be right up the alley for somebody who prefers a slower, more methodical approach to naval gameplay. Because it has decent firepower, it's much more enjoyable to spade than something like the Socrates would be. But I can assure you, it won't be everyone's cup of tea. Now onto the poster boy of mid-tier Japanese coastal fleet, the Type K8 1944. To start off with the 2.3 ships, we look at this sub-chaser, armed with an 8cm gun, although actually a 76mm, three single 25s and a dual 13.2mm mount. You can see this thing as a bigger and approved Type 5 with better survivability, armament and mobility. The 8cm only carries high explosive, but it should be more than sufficient for most targets you'll face, but provide an issue when encountering armored vessels like the Russian gunboats. Playstyle wise, you can be more aggressive thanks to your relatively high survivability against autocannons. But be very careful since from this PR onwards you can face destroyers, and high pan rounds will just tear through you. This also includes rounds from the Russians and German gunboats that are equipped with big guns. The 8cm proves a good weapon with high damage per shot, but don't forget to switch to 25mm when you're getting flanked because the traverse rate on the 8cm leaves much to be desired. Be careful you don't overextend either as you don't have the mobility to hastily withdraw when the situation changes around you. Pros. Decent firepower, decent survivability. Cons. Low mobility. Verdict. Consider it. 
it's a big step up compared to the preceding vessels, but should still be somewhat familiar to those who play the Type 5. The mobility hampers your ability to get into optimal positions, but even then, if you can conserve your crew by using cover and bow tanking, you should still be able to perform just fine. Again, however, keep in mind that from this BR forward, you can see destroyers in your matches. For the next vessel, I'll be looking at two at the same time, since they perform almost identically. These being the Type K3 number 1 class and the Type K7 number 4 class. These two ships will be your mainstay at 2.3 and for a very good reason. Both are armed with dual 40mm mounts and three single 25mm autocannons. The only difference being the layout of the 25mm cannons. The 40mm have a low velocity compared to the bow first 40mm you might be used to on other ships, so their effective range is also lower, but their damage output is the same. These Japanese 40mm have a large bow with a relatively short reload, making their handling very pleasant. As for their ammo choice, I suggest mainly using the semi armor piercing belt, bringing a few high explosive time fuse belts along when you want to engage aircraft. Their survivability is very good considering that they don't really have any armor protection, but their sheer length makes them very strong bow tanking vessels. For their playstyle, I suggest a very aggressive pushing strategy. Their narrow, long bolts make them ideal for bow tanking, and their moderate speed of 37 km an hour makes them fast enough to get to the objective in a meaningful time, but not so fast where they can easily prevent themselves from overextending. On all fronts, their mobility is perfectly adequate for their class, however, do try to keep yourself as far removed from destroyers as possible, as they will eat you for breakfast. Now, as good as these vessels are, they do have a few minor problems. The 40mm don't pack enough of a bunch to effectively deal with armored targets like the later Russian gunboats and early destroyers. Their big size and moderate speed also makes them attractive targets for aircraft, so keep a close eye to the sky. Pros, good firepower good survivability. Cons, rather low effective fighting range. Verdict, spade. Both of these vessels, even with the constant damage model changes and the high compression of battle ratings in naval, still perform very well in both dealing and taking damage. Even if you were to not spade any other vessel in this tree, I highly recommend giving these two ships your time. You won't regret it. Second to last, we have the T-51B. Still sitting at 2.3, this vessel is the definition of kiting when it comes to the coastal fleet. Armed with a triple 25mm mount and four torpedoes, the catch is that the triple 25mm mount has a poor firing arc towards the front of the vessel, leaving you to expose a lot of broadside when getting your guns on targets. But don't think this makes the vessel bad, because the triple 25mm mount, equipped with an AP belt, packs a hefty punch. Compared this with the high velocity of the shells, this makes the mount one of the best for main armament. Now let's not forget about its four torpedoes either, which makes it very useful at threatening enemy destroyers and other big targets. Survivability wise, it's pretty standard for a vessel of its type, but the T-51B can be rather vulnerable since it has to almost constantly show broadside unless you sail away from a target. But it isn't made out of glass either, giving you at least some time to react to a threat. The mobility of the T-51B is quite mediocre as well as having a top speed of 52 km an hour, and a somewhat sluggish turn time which could make for some rather stressful moments when a target suddenly pops up in front of you. Playstyle wise, as I mentioned earlier, you should use this vessel exclusively for kiting, which the velocity of your shells give you the opportunity to do at a comfortable range. When facing destroyers, however, I suggest you try and get as close as possible, without getting spotted as they can have difficulties aiming at close targets. At close range, it's also easier for your torpedoes to get on target. One or two should be enough to take a destroyer down. Pros, good firepower, has torpedoes. Cons, mediocre mobility. Verdict, spaded. While the survivability is nothing special and the mobility is somewhat mediocre, the firepower is something to admire even with restrictions to the firing arc. This is one you should enjoy, especially when the matchmaker favors you. And finally, the Type 11. The only 3.3 in the coastal tech tree, Type 11 sits in a rather awkward spot. It's post-war design, using two 40mm bow for cannons and four torpedoes. The Type 11 also boasts a high top speed of 74 km an hour. The Bofors 40mm are the gold standard for coastal vessels having good AP rounds, high velocity shells, and no real reload, allowing for continuous fire. But in up tiers you will face a lot of targets that can outgun you, 
so don't be too careless. The survivability is also surprisingly high thanks to a rather odd crew compartment layout. In all records, this is a superb ship, but there is one problem that can't be ignored. It's battle rating. This battle rating makes it possible for the Type 11 to see late destroyers and other coastal vessels that are way stronger than it. Playstyle wise, I suggest an aggressive cap pushing strategy, where you should use your speed to get capture points as fast as possible, cutting down any competitors with your ample firepower. A single torpedo has more than enough power to it to sink late destroyers, so use them wisely and stay out of their sight as much as possible. Pros good mobility, decent survivability, decent firepower. Cons, inconsistent matchmaking experience. Verdict, consider it. It's a really good vessel, but its BR can be a real loose cannon on your experience with it. With full up tiers being very dangerous for you, while full down tiers will be your playground. And that's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I hope it contains some useful information for some of you. This was the first part in a four part series going over the entirety of the Japanese naval tech tree. Next video, I'll go over the frigates, which get a different spawn. For more naval content, I highly recommend these two content creators, Flipstuck and Napalm Red. Both their channels can be found in the video description. Goodbye, and may the seas be calm.